Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, let's try to understand what exactly is a microservice and why microservice architecture is preferred over the traditional monolithic application architecture. You might have heard a lot of times that companies prefer the microservice architecture, but why? In this video, I will explain from a layman point of view, how organizations benefit using the microservice architecture. It can be from the developer's point of view. It can be from the QE or testing engineer's point of view or it can also be DevOps point of view. We will cover all these aspects and understand how microservice architecture is going to improve the efficiency of the organization. This video is going to be very informative. Please try to watch it till the end. Before we get started, we need to understand what exactly is the monolithic architecture. Why? Because microservice architecture is introduced to address the challenges faced in the monolithic architecture. Now, what is monolithic architecture? If you go back, maybe 10 years back, most of the companies used to follow the monolithic architecture where if you take example of e-commerce website, let's say there is a company that is writing a e-commerce website where any e-commerce website has some common features, right? For example, there is a login feature. There is a, a catalog which displays the products. Then you have, uh, for example, a cart feature where you can add the selected items and assume there is a payments so that you can pay the selected item, pay for the selected item. If this entire thing, all these features, all the code is written and bundled as a single binary. What does that mean? Assume this complete website where the backend is written in uh, Java, for example, and if the front end assume is written as in the React. If this complete code is written as a single application and if it is bundled as a single jar file or war file or an enterprise archive file, and deployed onto the server, then this architecture is called as monolithic architecture. The server can be assume a Tomcat server or a WebSphere or a WebLogic server. Now, what is important to note in the monolithic architecture, the complete code is written as a single application and the complete code is built as a single binary. So the end output of this e-commerce website, if you want to deploy it on a server, you are packaging it or you are bundling it as a single archive file. Again, it can be a jar file, war file or an enterprise archive file. End of the day, it is deployed as a single application onto this server. You might ask me, but Abhishek, what are the downsides of it? You, know, you are bundling it as a single binary and you are deploying it. So what is the problem? Now the problem is that because all the features are written in a single application or all the code is in one place, it becomes difficult from the developer's point of view. It becomes difficult from the QE point of view as well as DevOps point of view. Let's understand how. If you take developers, for example. Now, because 
all the code is written in one single application. Whether the change is in the payments, if there is a bug that is identified, if the fix is in the payment or if the fix is in the cart, if the fix is in the catalog or the fix is in the login, they have to go through the complete code. They have to traverse the complete code to identify where the fix is. If the code is simple, assume if it's some thousand lines of code, then you might say that Abhishek, I can simply go uh, to the particular feature. I can iterate to the particular point of code and I can simply fix it. What if the code increases from thousand lines to 10,000 lines? What if the e-commerce website becomes very popular and code becomes hundred thousands of lines? Then the developers will find it very, very challenging because there will be a lack of ownership. Not only lack of ownership, but even though the developers know where the particular fix is, they will not be confident about the fix because there is hundred thousand lines of code and a simple variable that they are changing or a simple, let's say, a conditional statement that they are changing might impact any other code. So they will have to spend a lot of time even to fix a simple bug. Again, from the queue point of view, the same reason, right? The fix might be in the payments, but QE will not be confident just testing the payments because the complete code is interconnected, interlinked. QE will end up testing all the features and DevOps engineers, obviously, because this is a single application, they have to create binary for the complete thing and deploy it onto the server, which might take a lot of time, which is anti-pattern or against the DevOps principles. So the DevOps principles itself says that your code has to be built very fast, tested very fast and deployed very fast so that it gives the developers a chance for multiple iterations. What do I mean by that? Let's say a bug is reported on the payments. Developers might not find the issue for the very first time. They might think the issue might be fixed, but when it actually goes to the QE, when it is actually deployed onto the development server and QE is testing it, they might find that the bug is not completely fixed. So they send it back to the developers. Again, developers might make a change. Again, QE might reject it. So it will, basically this is a software development life cycle where this will lead to a lot of time if you are in the monolithic architecture. So the effort has increased for the developers, QE, as well as DevOps engineers. And when the code increases and when there is security concerns with the code, when there are security related issues or when there is, you know, additional features that are introduced to this particular e-commerce website, then it becomes even a bigger headache. So these are the challenges of the monolithic architecture. You might be thinking that it's a single binary that you are deploying, but even if there is a change in the front end, if there is change in the cart, if there is in the payments, you will face the problem that building the code and deploying the code might take good amount of time, maybe like two to three hours where the customers might be expecting or with the DevOps approach, you want to automate this process in two to three minutes, right? DevOps itself means continuous integration and continuous delivery where you want to ship code fast, which is an anti-pattern with the monolithic architecture. So this is where microservice architecture is introduced. And with the microservice architecture, if you take same e-commerce application as an example, so the e-commerce application Earlier, as we discussed, assume there is a login feature, there is a cart feature, 
there is a uh, catalog and there is a payments in the microservice architecture you create a service or you create application for each of them what is the basic criteria of breaking down your application into multiple services or breaking down your project into multiple services how will you know if a e-commerce application should be broken down into 10 microservices or 20 microservices or 50 microservices the logic is very simple whenever you identify a feature that is completely independent of the other features for example login is completely independent of cart cart is completely independent of catalog catalog is completely independent of payments in such cases you can break them down into services so a project can be broken down broken down into microservices depending upon the number of independent that is not dependent features so if you have login cart catalog payments in future you might add notifications which is again independent of the other things you can break them down into microservices now what will be the advantage that you get with this microservice architecture the fundamental advantage that you are going to get is the time that is taken to build test as well as deploy this microservices or even if you talk from the developer point of view the time that is taken by the developers to identify the fix is very less because if there is a change or if there is a fix in the login developers can directly go to the login and they can identify the fix and they can fix it once they fix it when they say the devops team the time that devops engineering team takes to build test and deploy is very very less which probably might take some two to three minutes to perform execute the ci cd process now, i'm not explaining what is ci cd because this is a different context i have explained in the past but with microservice architecture, the rapid development testing as well as the DevOps or the deployment process can be implemented. So the e-commerce website is very easy for you to understand monolith versus the microservice architecture. Any features of the e-commerce that are independent from the other, that is the features that are independently deployable, independently tested and independently developed can be broken down into the microservices. And using microservices, the advantages that you get, the code can be quickly built, the code can be quickly tested and the code can be quickly deployed. Tomorrow, when you deploy this e-commerce website, let's say you deployed this onto a Kubernetes cluster or even to multiple virtual machines. Login is deployed, logout is deployed, catalog, payments and notifications. They're all deployed as different artifacts. If there is a fix that is or a bug that is identified in payments, what you can simply do is you can have all of them in the running state. You can just uninstall this particular thing this payments feature, take the new version of payments that is developed by the developer of the payments team and just replace the old version with the new one. All the other components, you don't even have to touch it. Because of that, the same thing, time that is taken to develop, test and deploy reduces drastically. So this is the advantage that you are going to get with the microservice architecture. If you want to learn, if you want to see practically 
how microservice architecture is deployed how microservice architecture code look like and how you can deploy it onto the kubernetes cluster you can watch this video that i am attaching the video link will also be available in the description where i have explained end to end this has 11 microservices i have shown very clearly how to get this deployed onto a kubernetes cluster thank you so much for watching this video see you all in the next one take care bye bye